All right, what is up, everybody on YouTube? We're at the final stretch. We are at the Orc Flyers and the Lords of War. So we are going to go over these units in the 9th edition codex and see uh, how they've been shaping up thus far. Now, keep in mind, there is the chapter approved coming out in, I think, less than two weeks. So I'm going to have to make an update video. But to give you an overview, Flyers right now are very strong in the Orc 9th edition codex. Earlier in the in 9th edition, before the balanced data slate came out, People were just spamming Orc Flyers. They were getting three DACA Jets. They were getting Blitz of Bombers, Burn of Bombers, Waz Bombs. Basically, half your army was Flyers, and you would just pick Freebooters and Alpha Strike the crap out of everybody. They've since changed that, but Flyers are still strong. However, you're, res you're limited to two spots of Flyers per army. Lords of War so far have seen very limited play and competitive play, and... Um, as I said before, we'll see what changes around the corner, but this is the current ranking for the current state of the meta. As always, we are ranking for a competitive play, which is Grand Tournament 2021, which is what most of the tournaments are running nowadays for a competitive 40k. 9 to 10 is creme de la creme. It means it's the best of the best in the category of either Flyers or the Lords of War. 7 out of 8 means that it's viable in competitive play and it's seen in certain archetypes. 5 to 6 means that it's not proven, but it does have some potential. 1 to 2 means that, uh, sorry, 3 to 4 means many other units fulfill a better role. 1 to 2 is crying face. It means why did they even put this in the codex? Makes me so sad. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the first category, which are the flyers. Six more wounds, and each boom bomb can only be dropped once per battle, and this thing comes with two boom bombs, so you can use it twice per battle. The Blitz Obama, the shooting is nothing to write home about. It's just big shooter and uh, super shooter. So most of the time, if you're running a Blitz Obama, you're just going to want to fly this thing off the map and then just pick a spot where it ran over. Now, with the limited choices in flyers, the Blitz Obama has definitely not seen much play. Most people are picking Daka Jets or Waz Bombs. The unit itself, I believe, is not bad, but given that you only have two slots, you would rather take the other flyers. So for that reason, I would rank this a 6 out of 10. Next up, we got the Burn a Bomber. It always confuses me why the Burn a Bomber is yellow while the Blitzer is red, because I always associate red with Burn a Bomber, but that's why I have trust issues. So th this is another bomber aircraft. It has less mortal wound output, but you have the option of giving it Scorcher Missiles. So if you give it Scorcher Missiles, it actually ends up have, uh, being the same cost as the Blitz of Bomber, which is 150 points. It's not bad, uh, but for 150 points, it's not bad, but it's not great. So for 150 points, you really would rather spend it on something else. You can score and gauge on all fronts with flyers quite easily. And I think that's why a lot of people were just spamming flyers in the beginning. Because uh, you can just alpha strike the crap out of your enemy. But like I said before, the burn -a bomber has the same issues that the blitz -a bomber does. Which is competing for one of the two slots. And in that case, it's honestly trailing way behind the Daka Jet and the Wasp Bomb Blast -a Jet. So for that reason, I would give it a 6 out of 10. Now the DACA Jet is literally every Orc player's dream. This is 4 Super Shooters, so 24 shots, decent strength, strength 6, minus 1 AP, and 1 damage. You can boost it up with the Speed Walk, giving it minus 2 AP and giving it an additional shot. Plus, you can give it 2 extra Super Shooters, so it could have 6 Super Shooters. That's 36 shots, base shots, for 120 points. And if you buy today, you can speed wog it and get an additional 6 attacks. So that's 42 shots from the super shooter at DACA range, which is very easy because it's a flyer. So you can just swoop right in there. And you can DACA to your heart's content. So the DACA jet is amazing for that reason. 120 points is going to do a lot for you at 120 points. You can just blow stuff off the backfield objectives where people usually just leave like 
some weak infantry holding those primary objectives in the back. Uh, this thing can also, like any flyer, get can get engaged quite well. And using some tactical movements, you can also block movements with flyers and be sneaky like that. Having Ramshackle on all the flyers is also great. All the flyers have Ramshackle, so it does make this thing a little more durable. From me playing personally, you'll be glad if it lasts two turns, but oftentimes uh, Daka Jets will get focused down and they'll be done by... Sorry, you'll be glad if you get three turns out of it. Most of the time, you're going to be losing this thing by turn turn two. But uh, on, while the time it's on the field, it's been proven very, very useful and definitely makes up for its points cost. Even just taking and absorbing a lot of fire is good because Daka Jet being airborne, it does have hard to hit, which means that your enemies have minus one to hit on the Daka Jet. For that reason, I would give this 10 out of 10. There was a reason why freebooter lists were running three of these all the time because that that ballistic skill going to four plus and you having 42 shots hitting 21 shots as an orc off one unit it's pretty damn pretty damn daka next up we got the was bomb the was bomb is like the the opposite of daka jet in terms of its guns only in the rating it's the same so was bombs are now much more popular than Daka Jets, which is interesting. So now people are taking uh, usually double Wasp Bombs in Freebooters list. These things have a starting ballistic skill of 4+, plus, which is very not orky, but still makes me happy. With Freebooters, once you trigger that plus 1 to hit, it goes up to a 3+, plus ballistic skill. And that makes things very fun because you got the Teleport Mega Blasters, which most people will take on the Wasp Bomb Blaster Jets. That's giving you... An assault D6 shots. So you can even... I mean, technically, you could even advance this. Which most of the time, you won't need to. But Assault D6 shots. 9 strength. Minus 2 AP. And then V3 plus 3 damage. So that's quite a lot of damage. This thing ha will have a really good time targeting anti-armor. Maybe some Plague Burst Crawlers in the back. Uh, blowing up some of those goddamn freaking Drukhari Raiders. Those are called raiders, right? They're transports. God, I hate those things so much. It does also have a smasher gun, which is nice. And it comes with... You can also give it two super shooters. Sitting at around... Most loadouts sit around 200 points. And for the points value, it is very good. It dishes out a lot of hurt. And in freebooters especially, it's an essential piece of freebooters. So for that reason, it's a 10 out of 10. Okay, this is the first sad face of the review. So... I don't believe I've ever ranked a unit this low in the entire codex. Heavy support, HQ, elites, fast attack. And unfortunately, I got to give it to the Gargantuan Squig off because this thing might be big, but it doesn't have that big energy. You know what I'm saying? It's just big. So this thing costs 500 points and it doesn't do much. And it's honestly kind of disappointing. It does have a... Uh, what it does have is the huge tusk, so it does have D3 plus 3 damage. But at 8 attacks, you're going to land hypothetically 6 of those, and probably about 4 of those will actually wound, because most of the time now things have like decent and vulnerable save. So yeah, whatever you do hit is going to take quite a punch, but if you just... You could easily tie this down with a bunch of chaff for at least 2 to 3 turns, and... Aside from combat, this thing is not really going to help you a lot in terms of scoring objectives. Yes, it can hold some infantry in there, but realistically, it's not. It's so big, it's not really going to be able to deliver your infantry where you want to, especially in this current competitive scene where there's a lot of ruins, there's a lot of things that this quig off is not going to be able to get over or get through. It's going to be hard to maneuver. 36 wounds. It is quite a lot of wounds. It's going to last quite a bit. But realistically, I think your opponents could even ignore this. And they could just probably be scoring primaries and secondaries with no problem at all. It's just too expensive. I feel like this is a unit that should sit around maybe 300-ish points. And then it would see some play. But if you compare this to... Um, a unit that transports stuff and kills stuff like the kill rig right now. 
The kill rig is just miles ahead of this thing. That thing has psychic powers. That thing is way, way better in combat. It's more consistent in combat. And even its range option is, while it's actually, the range op options are weaker on the kill rig, they're a bit more consistent because they don't even need line of sight on the kill rig. And it also has that auto hit weapon if you are able to get psychic powers. So for that reason, this is the first sad face, and I would have to sadly give the Gargantuan Squigoth a 2 out of 10. Next up, we got the Gorkonaut. So Gorkonauts and Morkonauts used to be the heavy support category, but they've actually been bumped to Lords of War, which I feel like is honestly a nerf. Gorkonauts and Morkonauts have not been seeing much play at all, and while they have seen increases in their stat lines, I think that keeping... I think the... The power of orc units are like just having lots of bodies, whether that be in vehicles or infantry. And when the Gorkonaut and Morkonaut was at 250, you could justify taking uh, one or two of them in your army and using them as a kind of like a like a super beat stick. But now, when you take in the fact that the Gorkonaut's at 350, you're taking up a considerable chunk of your army to run this thing, and you also have to ask the question, how is this going to help me get, how, how is this going to win the game? Of course, this thing can kill a lot of stuff. It's got a very good melee profile and it does have, um, where's the, so it can either crush or smash, which makes it quite adequate at dealing with either units that are like infantry or anti-armor or dealing with armor. However, it's quite big. This has this one of the same issues as Squigoth, where it's going to be hard to maneuver around the field with this thing. And realistically, if you think about how you're going to use it, you're just going to want this to go in and kill stuff. Now, another drawback is that while 24 wounds is a lot of wounds, it means that it doesn't get any benefits of cover. So once again, there's a lot of shooty armies out there that will just wrap this thing off the field and they could do so on turn one and you've just now you've wasted 350 points of your army that's gone i personally if i were to run a gorkonaut how i would run it is to put it in a teleporter and use it the way that a lot of people use the mega dread but now you make comparisons with the mega dread where the mega dread is much cheaper and although it's not it doesn't have six damage with its melee attacks the mega dread is cheaper it's smaller so it's easier to deep strike and being that it's cheaper well it's half the cost of this you can justify it a lot more in the role of it being a deep strike unit that you charge with either either ramming speed mega dread sometimes don't even need ramming speed because you can re-roll uh, one of the extra dice because it has mega charge you tie up some of the range options that your opponents have in the backfield or you use that to you use your that unit to basically steal objectives by running into primary objectives or disturb actions or whatever you need to do the plus side of the mega dread seem to outweigh the plus sides of the gorkonaut where gorkonaut you have a bigger unit that's stronger but when you think about it tactically i think mega dread fits that role of just being a, a distraction force that's strong enough to distract your opponent, but also not such so much of a points investment where you're like worried that it's going to die. For those reasons, I give the Gorkin out a 5.5 out of 10. It does have potential. I think it has decent stats, but it's not been proven itself in the higher echelons of competitive play. Next up, we got the Morkonaut. So the Morkonaut is the shootier cousin of the Gorkonaut. It has strong anti-armor capabilities, but when I was uh, running Morkonauts in 8th edition, I did have a lot of fun with them, and they were quite good. One issue is that they do end up hurting themselves a lot, and so they have a difficult time sticking around in the battlefield. Also, given the fact that it doesn't gain any benefit from obscuring terrain, so you can't really hide it, it's really easy to wrap this thing off the field. It's got more expensive now as well. So with the custom force field that you can give this thing, it sits at around 390, I believe. 390 points, which is a considerable amount of points. I found that now the Morkonaut is it's very hard for it to recoup its point cost. And it's really hard to do anything with it in terms of primaries and secondaries besides using it to kill stuff where it's 
that useful. And again, in certain maps, it, there's going to be just so much terrain that this thing is going to have a hard time moving around. That being said, the anti-armor capabilities are pretty good. But when you are having to shoot chaff with this thing, you're kind of sad because you're just inflicting more wounds on yourself. I mean, technically you're not inflicting too much, but on average, I believe you are going to be inflicting, mathematically speaking, about two wounds to itself. And uh, interestingly enough, none of the Lords of War get Ramshackle. And while I think every single Lord of War has the ability to heal itself with Riggers, the Morkanaut and Gorkanaut does not have the ability to heal itself. So that's another bit of a thing that makes you go, ah, that's kind of sucks. Wish they had it. Morkanaut is seeing like no play in the top orc list that are doing well. And it's, I think it has a hard time finding a space in the any orc archetype right now such as freebooters or at least the top tier ones like freebooters or goths because this is supposed to be like your heavy super walker with a lot of range weapons but for the same amount of points i think you would way rather have two was bombs even or three scrap jets and like two cut uh yeah three scrap jets which is just a little less than this in points so there's better range options it's not finding a role that it needs to find in competitive scene. So for that reason, I'll give this a 5 out of 10. Next up, we've got the kill tank. So kill tank is great. I don't even know what to put, what category this is. Basically like a like a land raider. So it's just like, it's a kill tank. If you like to roll a lot of dice, this is pretty, this is right up your alley because 30 dice. The giga shooter is very consistent as you can actually, if you're shooting something within half range, then you add one to the attack roll. Before, uh, there was a kill tank archetype where you ran goffs, you took three of these with Gazgul, and you basically bully people off the field by just slamming your kill tanks into things. Then you have old Gazzy come and punch people in the face. It was a great archetype, and it was doing well. But now it's kind of fallen out of favor. People are rather running kill rigs than kill tanks. Kill tanks are not super expensive, so they have a lot of potential. They're 250 points. And I think I actually think if kill tanks were a heavy slot, this would give them a lot more playability. As that way, you don't have to spend command points a into investing in basically having to get Lords of War. But at the current stage, they do show potential. They are seen in some lists actually here and there. I have seen them in some Goths lists with infantry, and they seem to be performing. I've seen it in a couple lists that went three wins, two losses, or four wins. One losses. It's been a while since a pure kill tank list has like gone 5 0, but there's definitely a lot of potential in this unit. Good stat line, decent points 250 points, 24 wounds, 8 toughness. It can heal itself. Good gun that adds one to the attack roll, which is always great as an orc. Uh, it can deal some mortal wounds with its ram. It can also fall back and shoot because it's titanic too. So for that reason, I would give this a 6.5 out of 10 kill tank. I think it has potential, and I hope to see more of it as it seems to be a unit that has some hidden potential. It just needs to find a nice home in a good archetype. All right, next up, we got the Custom Stompa, and boy, Custom Stompa, man, you make me pretty damn sad. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's a Titan. It's got a lot of DACA. But man, the points cost makes it extremely hard to justify. It's 800 freaking points. Um, and it, it, honestly, 40 wounds nowadays, guys, It like 40 wounds means nothing now. Like if you've seen the new Tau sneak peeks, there's like a gun that does like, <laughs> it does nine damage minimum. So yeah, it could, people can definitely take this off the field by in two turns quite easily. Of course, you might be saying to yourself, oh yeah, but look at the DACA. It does have a lot of DACA, don't get me wrong. It's got big shooters, Def Cannon, Gaze of more Custom Super Rockets, Scorcha, Super Gatler, Twin Big Shooter. But here's the thing that's also a disadvantage of having a lot of guns on one unit is now if you're splitting up the shots, you have to declare that before you roll. So if you have, let's say... I mean, for the same points cost, you could have a group of scrap jets and a group of custom booster blasters. And you could even have more than that. You could have like two DACA jets too for the same cost as a custom stompa. The nice thing about having your unit split up is that 
you can shoot at one thing with your mega tracks. If that doesn't die, then you can choose to shoot at it with your uh, custom booster blasters, for example. However, if your mega tracks do kill the unit that it was shooting at, then you can, you're free to shoot whatever you want with the custom booster blasters. With the custom stompa, you don't get to make such choices. You have to declare all your shots and whatever lands, lands, and you cannot make adjustments. And boom, there goes your shooting phase for almost 50% of your army. Plus, again, it comes down to scoring objectives. How is this going to help you actually win the game? It's big, yes. It's killy. It, it is quite durable. But at the same time, this thing's only plan is really to kill stuff. So you're going to kill stuff. So you're going to hope to kill your enemy off objectives. And that's, that's, a, that's a game plan. You're just going to try to kill stuff. I mean, when you have different units, you can. it's easier to maneuver. You can block movement. You can contest objectives. But when you're literally 50, almost 50% of your army is on a, I don't know how big the custom stomp is. I think it's like a 10-inch. It's a 10-inch. It's basically on a 10-inch base. It gets tricky to score objectives and to be maneuverable. So for that reason, I think this is super overpriced. I think we got to see the custom stomp come down for us to consider it in competitive play. For that reason, I give it a 2 out of 10 and it gets the sad face. Next up, we got the stompa. So the stompa has come, come down a lot in points. It, I believe it was 850 or 900 points and now it's come down to 675, which is good. It's a good change. It's essentially the same loadout as a custom stompa but cheaper. I do still think it's a little too expensive. It is going to take quite a bit for your opponents to take down. It does have a lot of guns. It is killy. But once again, when it comes to scoring those valuable points, right now in the meta, it's much more valuable to have multiple units than to have all your points tied up in one single unit. That's where the problem lies. And I think that stat-wise, maybe this unit is perfectly balanced let's say hypothetically but when you're on the tabletop and you're trying to move this thing through some ruins and it gets stuck and now your whole that your whole your enemy's whole army is just brapping at this and it can't even see some of the things it's brapping at i mean it's very orky but it's not a whole lot of fun so it, i i do think it has potential i think if it comes down in points maybe the old custody because there used to be lists where people ran stompas and just a bunch of boys. So maybe we will see something like that come back. But I think right now in this situation in the meta, there's a lot of anti-armor that people are running. And it just makes it really hard to justify having a stompa. But I do think there's potential. So for that reason, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. And I think stompa is one of the units that's actually improved a lot going from 8th to 9th edition. So that's, uh, that's it for uh, this video, guys. Thanks for watching. It's going to be really fun to see what changes Games Workshop comes up with in Chapter Approved. Hopefully, they don't nerf us into the ground. Uh, there's a lot of rumors about buggies being nerfed, wasp bombs being nerfed. Hopefully, we get some buffs and they can actually, maybe they'll buff up some of the things that has not been seeing play. That would be awesome. I think as any player of the game, we really don't want to have um, you know just an auto win army we want to have armies that are well balanced that have a lot of viable builds and strategies I think overall in ninth edition they did a great job with orc because orcs have a variety of builds now there's the freebooters you got the speed freaks you got goths some people messing around with the new blood axes with a lot of infantry as well and it's exciting to see what direction the orcs will go in chapters approved 2022 as always, guys, stay safe out there. Keep those dice rolling. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for all your subs, your likes, and your comments. Really appreciate it. And if you have any of your own opinions, please leave them down below.